Welcome back! Well, we're still here in the middle of this grove area. And, uh, we've just, uh, completed the Murdered Settler side quest, which took quite a while, but thankfully both of the culprits have been caught and arrested. And now we can move on, but before we do that, I actually want to change out my party members. This is something I'm going to try to do, uh, at least just a few times on each planet, not too many. Because I do want to give each party member, except probably T3, uh, a chance to shine. And T3 just mainly because he's not exactly very good in combat, and he doesn't really have anything to say. Um, I may take him along on non-combat sections, if there's a city area to explore, for instance. But for the most part, I'm probably not really going to be uh, using T3 all that much. Not to mention that he doesn't really have anything to say uh, in the middle of conversations, too. Um, that is something I'm going to try to keep in mind when I select people, is that there are certain places, as you've probably noticed by now, where um, party members will interject dialogue uh, when you're talking to other people. Like, Karth did that at uh, the Hidden Beck base, and or more recently, Candorus did it while we were discussing the murder. Um, I'm going to uh, remove Candorus, I'm going to put Zalbar in, just to mix things up a bit. Because I'd like to have a couple of uh, melee fighters in my party. Um, and I'm going to try to um, do these party uh, member uh, changes at more natural points uh, along the journey. Of course, on Terrace, we didn't really have much of a choice as far as what party members uh, we took with us, except toward the end. Um, and here on Dantooine, it's kind of a little tricky, because aside from the points where you talk to the council... Being out here on the plains, it's kind of a little bit homogenous, so you kind of just have to do it whenever you're in between quests like this. So I'm going to just go ahead and do it here, and we can level Zalbar up now, which is good. I think he's got a couple levels to go through. I'm going to try to allocate most of his points to Demolitions and Awareness uh, for skills. And Feats, you have been granted the following Feats this level, Uncanny Dodge 2. A character with Uncanny Dodge 2 retains the Dexterity bonus to defense, even when surprised by camouflaged opponents, and also gains plus 4 on saves versus grenades. Well, that's good compared to our plus 2 from earlier. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to continue developing his 2-weapon fighting. Another level up, we can do attributes this time. I'm going to put a point in Dexterity, but uh, which I'm probably going to do for most people. But uh, for the most part, uh, with Zalbar, once we go through um, uh, subsequent level ups where he uh, gets uh, more attribute points, I'm going to try to put them in Strength primarily, because I do want him to be uh, a tank, basically. And we'll give him the usual rounds here. Alright, you've been granted the following feats this level, Implant Level 3. Uh, and all scouts will get this at level 8, by the way, even though we can't uh, allocate more feet points at this level. And that also means, uh, in case you're wondering, that if we had retained our scout status uh, up till this point, we would have gotten this uh, feat for free as well. Uh, but of course, uh, we became a Jedi at level 6, so we'll have to purchase this feat as uh, a feat point uh, later on when we level up, which I do intend to do, because I want to... Uh, get some pretty yes. nice implants once we can buy them. But we don't have the money for that yet. Well, let's see if we can find the source of the dark taint. But not before we kill more calf hounds, apparently. Hey, don't run away from me. Oh, I see. You want to bring your friends as backup. I see. Come on, guys. What? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I actually had a party member go down in this area while I was dealing with the calf hounds, which was uh, uh, on a practice run, which was kind of a little embarrassing. <laughs> okay, I think we got all of them. I think we're good. Alright, so let's see what's beyond here. There's people here. Mandalorians, uh oh, that can't be good. Well, we'll surprise them with a little uh, grenade action here. Why don't we throw a frag grenade? Okay, that did some damage. 
do it. Come on, dude. You can do it, Scott. Well, it's still rolling, dude. No, not Zalbar. Don't stun Zalbar. Looks like we keep this guy busy while Zalbar is still stunned. There we go. And we're not looking too good on health. And there's another Mandalorian there. Okay. Let's try to deal with this guy. Our force is depleted, so maybe we'll kill this little bit. Oh! Okay, Zalbar's a killer. Looks like power attack is really effective against these guys. Oof, there's another calf hound there. So we did miss a calf hound. Take Don't you hurt me. Good. Alright, now we can check out all the remains. Let's see what's over here. There was men warrior here. With a data pad. We'll read that here in a minute. Remains. Ooh, some nice stuff. Grenade, another data pad. And some good equipment, too. And a backpack. Let's see what those data pads have to say. Jarg went missing in Sector B. Then Riza saw someone moving south of there. Take a couple troops and find out who it is. If they look suspicious, terminate. I guess he's talking about us, then. Jarg, did you remember not to take the XT model bike out today? There was something funny with one of the intakes, and I thought it could jam. Ha! Consider yourself lucky. If someone was dumb enough to take that thing out, he would have plowed right into the ground within a kilometer. Well, I'm glad we can't ride bikes, otherwise we might have had an untimely death, should we have chosen that. Well, I guess we can ride swoop bikes, but those are different. Well, it looks like we're in pretty good health after that. Sometimes I have trouble with the Mandalorians, but that one wasn't too... That bunch wasn't too bad. Okay, this isn't uh, giving us a whole lot of trouble, which is nice. They should all be like that, so that'd be amazing. Still haven't found this dark taint issue yet, uh, unless it was the Mandalorian. So we were told that we'd have to improve our uh, skill against the light. And it's none of them. So I think we're still, uh, uh, we're supposed to be able to do that. If you find a mission like that. Huh? Yeah. Sure. Okay, now we can take care of it. Horn ones are really, really annoying. And I'll use a med pack, why not? No, not an antidote kit. Antidote kits, uh, I'm probably gonna end up selling most of those, because when we get heal later on, uh, heal will automatically take care of poison issues. There's a structure over here with some remains. That doesn't exactly bode well. Oh, hey, there's somebody here. Hello. I will be your doom. Uh, okay. I think we found the source for Dark Tate. Flurry. <laughs> <laughs> this is not good health wise. Cure. And now we're stunned. Oh, great. This is not looking good, is it? Come on, Kane. Snap out of it, buddy. There we go. Okay, can we use cure now? That would be great. Good. I don't think using force powers will work on her. Listen, this is not looking good. I hate to do it this way, but I think we're going to have to use some uh, med packs and stuff. Okay, we made a little bit more progress. She finally missed. It's kind of rare. You 
You are strong. Stronger than me, even in my darkness. Okay, we can finally talk to her. Good. First of all, why did you attack me? I am Juhani, and this is my grove. This is the place of my dark power. This is the place you have invaded. When I embrace the dark side, this is where I sought my solace. It is mine. But why? When I slew my master, Quatra, I knew I could never go back. And now I revel in my dark power. Power enough to crush the life from someone such as you. Or so I had thought. Now, we couldn't kill her here, but I do want to try to see what's uh, going on here, because uh, there's it, it sounds like there's more than meets the eye here. First of all, why in the world did she uh, want to slaughter her master? That just seems weird. Yes, I struck her down in the middle of training, consumed by my anger, embracing the power of hate. But it was not enough. <sighs> what is it you want? Why do you bother me? Talk. You who have beaten me so easily just want to talk? I do not believe it. Kill me now while you still have the power. We don't really uh, have any grudge toward her or anything, I mean, aside from the fact that she tried to kill us, but uh, I, w I really want to know why in the world uh, um, she got angry in the first place and uh, tried to slay her master. That just seems rather odd. But we have no desire to kill her. You... you do not? I am pathetic. I sit here and think myself to be great by embracing the dark side, but I am nothing. There is no way I could be turned back. I always thought they held me back, or jealous of my power. This is only because I was not good enough to meet their standards. I never have been. Okay, now we're starting to get to the meat of this. Sounds like she, um... Uh didn't feel like uh, she lived up to the Jedi's expectations and uh, became more obsessed with uh, gaining power. Okay, so this is making a little bit more sense now. I thank you for your kind words, Jedi. I seem to still have much to learn, both about being a Jedi and about myself. But I wish the cost of my ignorance had not been so high. I wish that my master had not suffered because of me. I'm not going to use the persuade option here, uh, because technically it is her fault in, in some ways, because, I mean, I know this sounds kind of a little bit insensitive, but she could have chosen not to uh, become angry about it, but I know it must have been uh, difficult after um, having done something like killing her master, but uh, she could have chosen not to do that either in the first place, so I really don't want to say that. Now, of course, uh, if you don't have the persuade skill uh, necessary for these persuades to work, you can just use the nicest options here and you will be able to get by. But I, I do want to try using the persuades. But in this case, I think I will use this, this option here, number two. If she were alive now, there would be so much I would say to her. So much I would apologize for. How can the Council ever take me back with what I have done? Striking my master down in anger is unforgivable. I don't know, for, from what I've seen of the Jedi, they don't seem to hold grudges, and especially if you show them that you're sincere, then uh, I don't think there will be that much of an issue, and maybe they can help you out of this. I should convince them that I am truly repentant, that I am willing to forsake the dark side, and maybe, just maybe, they would accept me back. Do you think they would? Could it be possible after what I've done? I think to the Jedi, it's more about what's in the present and the decisions you make now that are more important than the decisions you made in the past. I thank you, Master Jedi. I will return to the Council then. I shall submit myself to their judgment and hope they will forgive me. Again, I thank you. I am sure I will hear great things about you in the future. Well, let's hope the Council will forgive her. But we got to help her out, and we cleanse the Grove of the Dark Taint, which is good. It seems like uh, she killed some Mandalorians here, too. Got an ar armor upgrade and some stimulants from him. And a melee shield. Alright. And now we can use the...
Ops, which is good. And we got our friends back, which is nice. Let's uh, let's try talking to Mission again. Hey there, what can I do for you? We started talking about uh, her brother and what had happened uh, uh, regarding their uh, being separated from each other last time, but when she started talking about uh, Lena, uh, she abruptly ended the conversation, so maybe we can pick that up now. I'm sorry for the way I acted before. It's just that when it comes to Lena, I tend to get a little worked up. My brother and me had a good thing going. Sure, Griff had his run-ins with the law on Terrace, but we got by okay, until Lena came and ruined everything. She was a dancer at the cantina where my brother used to go play Pazic. Griff could be a real smooth talker, and it wasn't long before the two of them were dating. But Lena was used to dating rich Theresian nobles, guys with mountains of credits. Griff could never give her the lifestyle she was used to, no matter how hard he worked. I get the impression, uh, from what we heard about Griff last time, that his definition of work is somewhat flexible. I'm not gonna pretend Griff wasn't a hustler and a con artist, but that doesn't mean you can just insult him. He did what he did to look out for me. I thought Lena would brush Griff off when she saw how poor he was, but for some reason, she stuck around. I guess she saw the potential for a big payday down the road. After they'd been together for a few months, Griff told me he was leaving Terrace. He and Lena were going to try and make their fortune off-world. He promised as soon as he made enough credits, he'd come back and get me, and we'd all live like royalty. That was two years ago. I haven't seen him since. I don't even know where he went. Oh, I know what happened. As soon as she got him off Terrace, Lena sunk her claws into Griff butt good. She twisted him around her little finger and made him forget all about me. I know I'll probably never see Griff again. But part of the reason I came with you was the hope that I could find out what happened to my brother. Don't worry. I won't let the search for Griff get in the way of what we're doing. Let's just get back to the task at hand. Is there anything else I can help you with? I get the impression that uh, if Griff wasn't exactly very successful with what he was doing, Lena probably would have ditched him anyway. And considering if, if that were to happen, then uh, if considering that he hasn't been back to sea mission, then uh, he would be probably at fault uh, for all this just as much, if not more, than Lena. Okay, have it your way. Well, let's go back to the Ebon Hawk. There's no sense in uh, running around out here. So we can get to the council a bit quicker. Uh oh, who's this here? Mission, is that you? It's me, Lena, remember? I was dating your brother back on Terrace. Lena? What are you doing here? Where's Griff? I'm just passing through. Griff and I broke up a few months after we left Terrace together. Probably for the best. Your brother can be charming, Mission, but he's bad news. Don't you start trashing my brother, you cantina rat! Take that back or I'll smack you so hard your head tails will pop off! What's wrong with you? Why are you acting this way? Aha, uh -huh, so we found Lena here on Dantooine. Well, I kind of wish there was another option here that uh, allowed us to ask uh, what happened. But, um, considering that this right here is all we have to go off of for the time being, and considering that this uh, is pretty insensitive, I do want to just go ahead and use this. You've got your facts a little backwards. Mission could have come with us if she wanted to. It was her choice to stay behind. You liar! Griff told me that you didn't want his little sister tagging along. That's why he had to leave me behind. Is that what the hut spawn told you? I wanted you to come with us, Mission. I even offered to pay for your ticket. Why not? I paid for everything else while I was with that freeloader. But he told me you didn't want to leave Terrace. I said we shouldn't even go then. But he said we'd come back and get you after we struck it rich on Tatooine another one of his lies. No, you're the one who's lying. Griff wouldn't... He wouldn't try to leave me behind. Okay, so it looks like our hunches about Griff may be turning out to be true. Let's, uh, let's start to try to convince Mission that maybe Griff isn't the guy that she, uh, um, thought he was. 
Think about it. If Griff wasn't trying to ditch you, Mission, then why didn't he tell you where we were going? After we left Terrace, he told me looking after you was holding him back. Griff's always looking to blame other people for his own problems. That's why he abandoned you. He did the same thing to me, too. As soon as I ran out of money, he started blaming me for all of his problems. Like it's my fault his get-rich-quick schemes never work out. Well, I would like to talk to Griff uh, before I make my final decision about uh, his character, but based on what even Mission has told us, and even she is uh, uh, trying to protect his honor, I'm not even sure I trust him just based on even that information. Let's just find out where he is now, though. Maybe we can uh, maybe we can go and visit him once we get off Dantooine. Still on Tatooine, as far as I know. Not that I really care anymore. And if Mission was smart, she'd forget about that no-good con artist. But Griff is my brother! I, I just can't pretend he doesn't exist! If he was here to defend himself, Lena wouldn't be saying all this bad stuff about him. Hey, if you want to talk to Griff, go ahead. Last I heard, he was going to make a fortune working the Zerka Corp mines on Tatooine. But as far as I'm concerned, he's out of my life forever. Griff's better off without you anyway, you table-dancing, brother-stealing, home-wrecker! Whoa! I guess that's my cue to leave then. I didn't mean to upset you, Mission. But one day you'll see I'm right about your brother. I only hope it's not too late by then. Alright, we've got a journal entry now for Mission's brother. You've run into Lena, an old girlfriend of Mission's brother Griff. Lena informed Mission that it was Griff's idea to leave her behind on Terrace when they left. She also mentioned that Griff was on Tatooine working the Zerka Corp mines. Understandably, Mission is eager to speak with him. So it looks like we're going to be going to Tatooine, and hopefully we can find Mission's brother there. And it looks like we're going to have to deal with that blasted Zerka Corporation, too, which I'm not exactly terribly excited about. This uh, mission is the first in, among a number of missions that some people call character missions or quests. And um, if you've played Mass Effect 2, um, they're kind of like the loyalty missions from that game. Uh, and basically the way you unlock these is you talk uh, to the party member in question, in this case mission, uh, long enough that she tells you about uh, Griff and Lena. And I believe after that last conversation we had with her, in which she told us uh, the story about Lena and uh, what she believed happened, then um, we'll have this dialogue with Lena back here at the Evan Hawk, which will be triggered only uh, when we exit the ship or when we transit back here. We can't just walk in here from that door, for instance, and uh, find Lena here. Um, for most of these uh these character missions, that's going to be the way it will work. Somebody will meet us outside the ship and they'll tell us about what's going on. So, uh, well, we're going to have to keep a, an eye out for that as time goes on. And for most of the planets we'll be going to, uh, the missions will probably be triggered there uh, when we exit the ship or transit back, but I do happen to know that Dantooine seems to be, at least from what I've experienced, a little bit more reliable as far as triggering these things. So I'm going to see if we can uh, use it when we come back here to shop uh, for that in, uh, purpose as well. Well, let's move on and tell the council about uh, what happened with Juhani. Of course, she's probably already been to see them already, so uh, they probably already know about what happened. And hopefully they've forgiven her too. Well, there she is right there. Let's find out what happened. I must give you my thanks. Because of you, I am once again welcome within the Jedi Order. Good. Let's find out uh, what the Council had to say. I have spoken to the Council, and they have helped me see the truth. The truth about myself, and the truth of my actions. Quatra's injuries were not so severe as I first believed. I was foolish to believe I could harm a master such as she with my, my clumsy efforts. The fierce confrontation between us was nothing more than part of my training. Quatra wanted me to understand the threat of the dark side, to see how easy it was to fall from the path of light. Wait a second. You didn't check to make sure that Quatra was really dead before you decided to turn to the dark side? Really? And also... The Jedi chose this method to teach Shuhani this lesson? It sounds pretty extreme for the Jedi. Not to mention that if Juhani's uh, journey down the dark side was uh, corrupting the Cath Hounds, 
then it could be said that, at least indirectly, um, Juhani, or, or the Jedi, rather, were responsible for these calf hound attacks, in a way. And that's not exactly a very good, though, light upon the Jedi. Quatra's methods may seem strange, but I trust her wisdom. This lesson has been difficult, but I am better because of it. Humility is never easy to teach, but now I truly understand my own limitations. After our last battle, Quatra had nothing left to teach me. I needed time alone to explore the turmoil of my own spirit. Only then was I ready to follow a guide, you, back to the light. When I left, Quatra knew her work with me was done. There are other disciples who need training throughout the galaxy, and she could not stay to see if I passed this most difficult trial. With your help, I have passed this difficult trial. The Council now feels I am ready to continue with my training, though they have asked me to wait here for the time being. Hey, I'm glad to see you're not getting hung up on all this. The past is in the past, you know? <laughs> I do not know what the Council has in store for me, but I will trust in the Force and the way of the Jedi to help me through whatever is to come. Well, I'm glad that uh, she has seen the light, uh, so to speak. Though, uh, I'm not exactly, like I said, I'm not exactly sure I agree with the uh, Quatra's methods on that, but uh, at least everything uh, ended up uh, for the best. And she's now welcome within the Jedi Order. Well, that's good to know. Let's go and talk with the council. Actually, I want to talk with Jar first. And I want to check out this, uh, because I forgot to do this when we were here uh, leveling up as a Jedi earlier. Welcome, sentient. It is important for the peace and harmony of all beings that the many paths of the Jedi Order be understood. Only through knowledge can all see the truth of the Force. Jedi Guardians train for battle and physical prowess. In contrast, Jedi Consulars seek to master the awesome power of the Force. Jedi Sentinels seek to find a balance between these two extremes. Um, and these just basically just tell you about the, uh, uh, the information concerning each class that Dorak already told us, and I think it's even word for word. Yeah, it is word for word. Um, we can just see a, a statistical comparison of the classes, which is the, the main reason why this is here, actually. Uh, Guardian, uh, of course, gets the most vitality points, but gets the least amount of force points, so 10 and 4. Whereas Consular gets the least vitality and the most 4 points, at 6 and 8, and Sentinel uh, balances the two out with 8 and 6. So, it, it's good to know that we're balanced out. Of course, uh, it's... It's not too hard to beat the game with any of these classes, but I, I do feel a little bit more comfortable using this one, for the LP at least. You have done well, my pupil. The ancient grove has been purified, and Juhani's journey down the dark path has been halted. Because of you, she walks once more in the light. But though she was saved, do not dismiss what happened to her. Juhani is both dedicated and true to the ideals of the Order, yet she was still vulnerable to the dark side as are we all. She struck her master in anger during her training, and injured her greatly. But it was Quatra's choice to test Juhani this way, and it seems to have made its point. Juhani has been redeemed, and you have passed your final test. Congratulations, Apprentice. Or should I say, congratulations, Padawan. You have proven yourself worthy of joining the Jedi. Let me be the first to welcome you as a full-fledged member of our order. Hooray! We've gotten our Jedi status, or our Padawan status, uh, to be more specific. And that means that we can now use the Jedi robes um, as our uh, armor. And although this doesn't help us much defense-wise, it will allow us to use a myriad of force powers, uh, and some of which will help with defense. And, uh, as we'll see later on, when we take other Jedi in our party, uh, they'll often have, uh, force powers that give, uh, defense and save, uh, bonuses, uh, to the entire party, not just themselves, so that really does help a lot. So I'm gonna go with the Jedi robe. Um, I'm actually gonna use these gloves now, since, uh, 
we got better ones. I'll give these to Candorus or somebody. Don't think... Well, yeah, Zalbar can use gloves. We'll put them on him. I do want to make Zalbar as strong as possible, so that's good. Um... Yeah, const... Well... No, I think I'll use de this one for dexterity. Um... Anything else we can do? I think that's all equipment-wise for now. Zalbar, are you looking good with equipment? We'll put this on him. All right. Yeah. Yes. I don't think there's anything more we can do on the workbench with our equipment because I don't believe we've got anything else. We don't have any crystals for our lightsaber, of course. Um, ranged weapons. The Zalbar's already, or the bowcaster's already decked out. We don't have anything new for that. Oh, okay. We got a bonding alloy for that, so that's good. This already has the upgrades. For so that probably means I'm going to give it to Mission for now, actually. Because the combat suits... Eh. This fiber armor is really nice, by the way. I'm probably going to keep it around for quite a while. Yes? Well, let's talk to our council folks here. I'll go to Vandar, since he's uh, the nicest, I think. It is good to see Johnny has returned to the Way of the Light. You are to be commended for your role in this. Your actions give us great hope for the future. Your training is now complete, Padawan. And perhaps now, it is time we dealt with the matter of the dream you and Bastila shared. When we heard of the ruins in your dreams, Master Dorok recognized it as one of a series of ancient structures here on Tantooine. This one in particular lies to the east of this enclave. We sent a Jedi to investigate, but he has not returned. Perhaps sending him in the first place was a mistake. The Force is guiding you through your visions. It may be that exploring the ruins is a task tied to your destiny. That is why the Council has now decided you should be the one to investigate this. The secrets to stopping Malak may be hidden within those ruins. You must investigate them and find what Revan and Malak were looking for. Well, if Revan and Malak were there, then at least we might be able to get a clue about what they were doing and in the dream. And maybe that uh, shiny thing that we saw them looking at will uh, help us uh, um, at least get an idea about what they're up to. A Jedi must ever be seeking knowledge. What is it you wish to know? I'm not really going to ask him about Bastila, because I think we asked one of the others about her, and we already know about uh, uh, her defeating Darth Revan and whatnot. Um, I can't ask him uh, why Vrook doesn't like me too much. I, th I think I'll go with that. Master Vrook may seem harsh and critical, but he understands the dangers that lie in your path. He wants you and Bastila to be fully prepared when you finally face Lord Malak. The way ahead will be difficult for young Bastila. And for you. But you must draw strength from each other. May the Force be with you. Alright, and now we can finally take Bastila along as a party member. And actually, for this portion of the game, we have to take uh, Bastila with us. Uh, and I think I will take Karth with us as well. Whoops, forgot to add him. There we go. I demand justice! The Central Family is a blight upon Dantooine. They must be punished. Whoa. The Council will look into this matter, Mr. Matale. You must be patient. Your accusations have no proof. And we do not want you stirring up trouble with the Sandrals, if there is some mistake. Mistake? My son Shen is missing. How can there be any doubt the Sandrals are to blame? There are other possible explanations for your son's disappearance. Ah, you Jedi are good for nothing but talk. I shall only wait so long before I take action on my own. As dangerous as the threat from Darth Malak and the Sith may be, we Jedi cannot simply abandon our other responsibilities. The Council has promised, Alan Matali, we will look into his son's disappearance. Should you have time, Padawan, you may want to investigate this matter. We'll do that, actually. We'll, we'll do that on the way to the ruins. If Shen Matali has not returned to his father, 
It may ignite a savage and bloody feud between the Matali and Sandral estates. We must not allow that to happen. Your study and training are important, of course. But the Jedi are not a cloistered order. Our influence and teachings must spread beyond the walls of our academies. It is in our real world that we truly prove ourselves worthy of the title Jedi. You would do well to remember this young Padawan. Not to mention that I wouldn't mind getting out of this enclave for a bit. I mean, come on, how bad could it be? All right. I do agree with uh, Vandar that uh, the Jedi need to demonstrate that uh, they're willing to practice what they preach. Especially since it seems like a lot of the people here on Dantooine feel like they are uh, they are a cloistered order, uh, staying safe within the Enclave. What can I do? Just wish uh, the council members got out a little bit more, that would be nice. And we can level up Bastila now. Let's give her some attributes here. I'm gonna give her more... Oh, let's see here. Wisdom or Charisma. Give her wisdom. Uh, skills... Awareness... Hmm... I didn't really want to use Treat Injury that much, but I think I'll give her points in it. And Powers... We can't get Heal yet, so we can get Force Shield, and I think I'll give that to her eventually. Um... But for now, I'm actually going to go ahead and develop her Droid destroying uh, skill since we've already got Force Whirlwind and we can't give her that yet. I think I'm gonna go ahead and get that. And that's all we can do for her for now, at least for a short time, because she's gonna level up again pretty soon, it looks like. Ready? So it looks sure. like we're going to investigate the Sandral Matale feud, finally. Looks like Alwyn uh, got the audience for the council that he was hoping to get, and they've delegated the responsibility of resolving the conflict to us. But we will do that in the next video.